we will see a lot of this innovation move from a patient proposition to a consumer proposition, which means as women, we can buy our condoms when we buy our makeup on, online. For, as a man, you can have a, a product or a solution for erectile dysfunction or premature ejaculation via a male wellness clinic that is communicating to you about enhancement of your life, not fixing you for a dysfunction because you're not broken. Hello and welcome back to Sigma TV. With me today we have Dominique Caretzos, CEO and founder of the Healthy Pleasure Group. Hi Dominique, thank you for coming on the show. Hi Jeremy, thanks for having us. Well, it's great to have you as always. And uh, before we start recording, you mentioned the term sex tech, almost as a branch off from uh, MedTech, which is the uh, main focus of the Digital Summit. Um, tell us a bit more what sex tech is exactly and where the Healthy Pleasure Group comes into the picture. Sure. Well, sex tech is probably a terminology that most people are familiar with in this space. We prefer to refer it to as sexual health and technology. But if without having to go through centuries of past history, it really just means that our industry is predominantly or has been in the past uh, largely polarized. We have family planning and porn, right? So many, many years. And so we've also had um, different genres of the world where we've had Me Too movements. We've had women that have taken precedence in not having our uh, health care being taken care of. Historically, categorically, we've always been underserved. We haven't had products. We haven't had solutions. So there's been many course of events or turns of the century, which has really lifted the veil on the importance of sexual health and technology. So today, we then if we just go back maybe 10 years ago, we saw, for example, something like a, a massager or a vibrator that you used to buy in a brown paper bag down a dark alley be moved into commercial sp spaces like uh, Selfridges or Lafayette. Um, you saw the medical industry looking at pelvic therapy and menstrual health as more commercial options for women, just within sexual health. Today, sexual health and technology, technology is the solar plexus for moving sex tech, what we like to call sex tech, as something positive. So health and pleasure, we are the only uh, global outfit that's dedicated to the future of sexual health and technology. Our mission is to make sure that pleasure and healthy pleasure is something to be endorsed, something to be considered and explored and not hidden away. It is the most innate human experience and it is healthy for us. So whether that is you know, not having to suffer through pain like endometriosis, uh, just that alone. We have 1.5 million women in the UK that suffer with it. We do even less about it. However, if I said to you erectile dysfunction, everybody understands that terminology. Everyone is familiar with it. So our really stripped back, our core purpose for existing is to empower these brands and products coming to humanity through innovation, through education, and the most important, investment. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, when we talk about uh, the medical sector, you can't really uh, look beyond what's happening right now with the COVID-19 pandemic. And it's obviously brought a lot of issues and some issues which we didn't even think would, we would have to worry about. Um, but are there areas that you think that are being overlooked? Absolutely. I mean, COVID, you know, without dismissing uh, the loss and the pain that everyone I'm sure has, has, has gone through at some point, what COVID did do for the sexual health industry is it lifted a veil on looking at how do we test, how do we track, but also how do we share our health status? So in the case of for example, an STI test, which is a sexually transmitted infection test. Previously, if I said sex and safe, I could probably empty a room in 30 seconds. Today, that COVID test needs to be included in your STI test, not just to mobilize yourself across economies, but to decide if you're going to give someone a kiss, if you're going to hug, if you're going to connect with somebody. So we've gone through a process of understanding that we need to identify, but we, what we are not doing, and, and, and I, I truly believe we're not doing 
correctly yet, is considering how this sharing revolution is going to come into play and how do does how do we feel about A, preventable health care, and B, how do I share and verify my health status? So, um, you know, in a positive spin, COVID has done incredible things for the sexual health industry in putting that preventable health care in the front of most of our minds, not to mention that for the first time we have permission to, you know, have self-care include sex care at the same time. Okay, and you mentioned a lot of things there uh, which you would consider to be important. Uh, are these also things you would consider to be standard for this area, this area of medicine? Jeremy, I think that's a great question. I, I think we're going to have to start to really think about what these standard measures are going to look like. In the case of the sharing revolution, or even in the case of building a medical app, First, we have to ask the question, what is the intent of asking for our data? How do we want to um, extrapolate that data? And then if we are enabling and empowering people to share it, what does that look like? To be, to be on a personal level, I have had to travel through the pandemic and, and I, you know, we're still in the pandemic. The process of a QR code or a piece of paper, and in some countries, even just a wristband, it just, the absence of technology really baffles me. How is it that we are able to, um, to test, to track, but then not empower and enable us to make sound decisions so that we can look at preventable health care, so that we can be able to share it? The sharing revolution is here. It's not going away. So I think how we um, enable people to share that, whether it's a digital badge, whether it's a centralized space where we can communicate and, and we know how to keep data safe. We know how to share that data. Um, it just doesn't seem like we're, we're doing a full 360. It's almost like we've let go of the human's hand and we can't do that. So I, I do believe on how we verify and how we share that is going to have to be part of what does this look like for us in the future. Mm -hmm. and that's really interesting because it kind of ties into something you said before about the importance of uh, innovation. Um, <clears throat> so what do you see for the future of innovation in this, in this area? You know, our space is moving so fast all the time because the scope for innovation is there. We've, as humans, male, female, uh, whichever gender or sexuality you, you associate with, we have been served with products. So the scope of what the future is can be anything from, um, you know, VR through sexual trauma. It can be sex robots. I'm going to say it out there because people always ask me that question. It could be uh, non-pharma products for, for like premature ejaculation because they exist already. The more important question, or the bigger question is, where will we see sex tech or where will we see sexual health and technology where previously it was down a dark alley or it was a prescription via a doctor we will see a lot of this innovation move from a patient proposition to a consumer proposition which means as women we can buy our condoms when we buy our makeup on online for as a man you can have a, a product or a solution for erectile dysfunction or premature ejaculation via a male wellness clinic that is communicating to you about enhancement of your life, not fixing you for a dysfunction because you're not broken. And the most important is by the placement of where these become accessible, so you start to reshape how we talk about healthy pleasure. And that is as big a question. Today, sexual health or sex tech will be available in all touch points of our lives. And you will see this move even faster as, as innovation and investment progresses. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sure we'll hear more about that at your uh, keynote with MedTech in October. Thank you so <laughs> much for your time and your insight, Dominique. Uh, thank you to the viewers for tuning in for this pre-interview. And obviously don't forget to register for the Digital Summit in October. Thank you and we hope to see you there.